And we're live. Okay. Are you there, Roger? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. All right. So, um, do you want to start this off or do you want me to start this off? Well, you, yeah, you can start it. Okay. So, we're talking about the fivefold ministry, right? And in Romans 12, Six, it says, we have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in portion, proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it's teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. So right there is talking about fivefold ministry mm -hmm. in Romans twelve, and um, and then Ephesians talks about about the fivefold ministry again. Ephesians four eleven it says. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, and some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers. Now, between these scriptures, it's talking about the Bible ministry. And I'm concerned about the people that are, are um, on broadcast. What's that? Are Your you audio know? was breaking up there for a minute. Is it now? Sounds better right now. Okay. Okay, and she'll be right back. Sometimes they have to go out and come back in. Hey, blessings, to Sister Tammy and Cheryl. Thank you for joining. Carla's going to be right back. The audio was cutting out, so she, she's going to go out and come back in. Then we'll continue. Well, the audio was breaking up on my end when Carla was talking, so she'll be right back. Hey, blessings, Anna. Welcome. He should be back here any second. But just to recap, she's talking about the fivefold ministry. No crops. Oh, this picture behind me is on my green screen, but it's a picture of the El Yunque National Rainforest in Puerto Rico. My wife and I went there for our honeymoon, so. <laughs> yeah, glad we got to see it before the hurricanes hit the island, so. Yeah, it was beautiful. So lush and green. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Hey, blessings for First Lady Lewis. You want to go to notification? Oh. And thanks for following. <laughs> hey, I'm doing pretty good.
So how long have you been an evangelist or practicing evangelism? Oh, okay. Hey, Justin, welcome. <laughs> Waiting on my guest to come back. I thought she would have been back by now, but we'll give her a little bit longer. <laughs> no, that's just the green screen is whenever the air conditioner comes on, it makes the green screen wiggle a little bit. And if the light shines on it too bright, it'll make a funny looking place on it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, the air conditioner kicked on and it kind of makes the screen wiggle a little bit. Okay. Okay, she's having trouble getting back in. She just texted me, so. Right back. That should do it. Sorry about the tip. Technical difficulties, everyone. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about fivefold ministry and evangelism, so sorry to keep everybody waiting. Okay, here she comes. Welcome back. It bumped me off and I can't come back in. But, uh, okay, right, so we're back we're now. Talking, okay, so we're talking about the fivefold ministry. And mm -hmm. um, I, I'm concerned about people that don't believe in the fivefold, but they believe in three of the fivefold, right? And um, mm -hmm. so, you know, for me, it it's like um, either you believe in the whole thing or you don't. 
Yeah. Right. Um, I know yeah. that I know that you have the calling on your life of evangelism and stuff, and so do I. And so I thought we could talk about evangelism. Mm -hmm. What What has been your experiences, Rick? What is what? What has been your experiences, Roger? Well, I'm, I'm fairly new at it, but, you know, people throw challenges out there. Like like they claim, there's one cha uh, scripture that they claim says that God created evil. But really, that's just the King James translation. In the New King James, it actually translates as adversity. He created adversity, which adversity is not evil. Because right. to the baby chick who's trying to get out of the shell, that eggshell is adversity. But if the baby chick doesn't go through the effort of breaking through that shell, it won't be strong enough to survive. So while adversity may not be pleasant, it's a lot of times necessary. Right. So, you know, I, I'm, I've got a um, safe house for girls that used to, that I was once, you know, and um, I'm starting to, you know, use my calling on evangelism, and I'm kind of new at it in a way, too. Um, yeah. That's why I wish um, there would be more of a third party, but um, yeah, it's, it's rewarding, but at the same time, you have to be aware of the enemy attacking all the time, you know, and um, so for me, it's kind of, I've, I've been more under attack lately oh, yeah. because I'm using my calling. Yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah. And I know they come they come with all sorts of different excuses why they shouldn't have to accept God or accept Jesus. You know, I mean, they'll try to start debates about the Catholic Bible has 77 books or something like that. And the Christian Bible has 66 and, you know, anything they can think of to throw at you to try to get you off your game and distract from actually dealing with salvation. At least that's right. been my experience. Well, the Catholic Bible has 76 books. I didn't know that. Uh, I, I, yeah. yeah, the Catholic Bible has more books in it than the, than the Christian Bible. And so then they say, well, which one's right? The Catholic Bible must be better because it has more books and all this, that, and the other. But the Catholic Bible is not going to get you any more saved than the Christian Bible. So Right. But any kind of a distraction they can come up with to avoid right. the real issue of dealing with their own sin and needing a savior. Right. And, uh, so, also, I found that uh, that I've I watched a lot of evangelism videos on YouTube actually from a lot of different pastors, and the ones that really suit me best are the ones. From Living Waters, there's a street evangelist named Ray Comfort, and I like the way he does it, so I kind of use his pattern. What's his name? Ray Comfort. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he goes. He's oh, from a church to, called Living Waters. Oh, I have to um, check into that myself. Yeah. I've been listening to a lot of MacArthur, MacArthur, and oh, John um, MacArthur. Yeah, and yeah. he he's he's good. He's a good speaker, mm -hmm. and he talks a little bit about evangelism, and what he says in there makes a lot of sense. Yeah, to me. 
Yeah, because I know the well the approach that Ray Comfort uses. He'll start out by asking them. He'll just start up a conversation with somebody, and then he asks, "Well, are you a good person?" And of course, ninety nine percent of the people are going to say yes. He says, "Well, I got four questions. You know, you mind if I ask you these questions and see how good you are?" And most of the people will say yes. And the first question he asks is, "Have you ever told a lie?" And of course, ninety nine percent of people have told at least one lie in their life. Right. And so, that's one commandment broken. And then he'll ask, have you ever stolen anything? And surprisingly, most people have stolen something. Yeah. That's another commandment broken. You know, he goes through four of them. He asks, have you ever looked on another person with lust? Well, then, yeah, just about everybody has. So then that's another, that's the, basically Jesus said, if you look on another with lust, you've already committed adultery with them in your heart. So then that, that commandment is broken and, you know, so he goes with four of them. Oh, and blasphemy. You know, have you ever used God's name in vain? Well, that's, you know, that's all, that's four of them. And almost most people have broken all four of those. And so he says, well, if you know, if you've been on judgment day, if God judges you by the Ten Commandments, would you be innocent or guilty? And of course, they have to admit they'd be guilty. He says, well, then would you go to heaven or hell? And some, some still try to say they're going to heaven, even though they've broken the commandments. But he corrects them and say, no, unfortunately, you'd be going to hell because you broke the commandments. And then he'll present Jesus to them. To, because Jesus died on the cross for your sins so that if, if you'll accept him as Lord and Savior, you can go to heaven despite the fact that you sinned. You broke his commandments. Right. That way, using the Ten Commandments to bring them to Jesus. Because the way he explains it, if you try to give somebody a cure for a disease they don't know they have, they're going to think you're nuts. So you have to show them they have a need, and then you present the cure. So sin, sin is the disease, and they, and and you know, which leads to hell. And so then here's Jesus; he's the cure for your sin. He'll get you to heaven. Right. Um. I, because I know that I've broken some of the commandments myself, you know. Oh, yeah. and Everybody not, has. You know, I'm not Lily White in in it at all, you know. Um, yeah. So, you know, I mean, everybody falls short of the glory of God for the wages of sin, is death. Mm -hmm. You know, and we all fall short of the glory of God, so. Um, yep. Yeah. Because we listen to our flesh sometimes, you know, and yeah. um, so you know we don't always obey God. But the key into evangelism, I think, is really listening and hearing God for ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah. obeying the instructions of what God wants us to, to carry out. Yeah. And absolutely there, there's really no room there's really no room for us that you know for error. I well, don't and at the same at the same time there's no mistake that we can make that God can't fix either. So Right. <laughs> I mean, at some point you just have to step out and, and just start doing it start evangelizing right and in my ministry i'm i'm able to evangelize to soon to be two girls in my house yeah and um you know it's it's an experience that that is gratifying but at the same time it's heart-wrenching as well because I can feel for them and I know yeah. what they're going through. Well, that's what makes you effective is because you've been, you've already been where they are now. So you can relate to them and you know, the challenges that they face that allows you to minister to them better than about anybody else could because you've already went through what they're going through. Right. So, um, 
do you have any more dis discuss or? No, I mean, I really don't have that much experience with evangelism yet. I've gone on Periscope, you know, several times. And so far, I've led one person to Jesus for salvation, but I'm looking forward to leading more people to Jesus and getting them saved. Right. And also, I remember Ray Comfort saying in one of his videos that what we need is true conversions, not just decisions for Christ. He said he can go out and get decisions all day long, but there'll be false conversions and they, you know, they, they'll fall back into their old life. Right. And that's what led him to use the, the Ten Commandments to show them their need so that, you know, their conscience will convict them once they see, you know, face the fact that they have broken the commandments. And so then the conscience, their conscience will convict them and then he'll, then they're ready to accept Jesus. Or at least they're ready to give it some serious thought. And also, he's also said we don't, we shouldn't just try to strong arm them into accepting Jesus. Right. But if we can, if we can just get them to realize they have a need for Jesus, and if they walk away thinking about it, that he's that we've done our job. Because really, at the end of the day, it's the Holy Spirit that gets them saved. Right. You know, we're just an instrument that the Holy Spirit uses. To bring them to make them face the fact that they need a savior and deliver right. the good news that there is a savior. His name is Jesus Christ. He died on the cross to pay for their sins so that they can go to heaven. They don't have to go to hell, even though they have broken the Ten Commandments. Right. That's about it. Yeah. So, what well, were your thoughts on the? What are my thoughts on it? Yeah. Begging and pleading with people to, you know, accept Christ is not the way to go. But, you know, I mean, going so far, so far into the doctrines, you know, whatever doctrine it is, you know what I'm saying? Um, by going to that, we can't be extremists. You know, we have to be balanced, yeah. you know, and, and we have to be doctrinally sound. You know, Absolutely. I mean, as far as, you know, I mean, some people, they believe in the Old Testament more than the New Testament. Some people believe more in the New Testament than the Old Testament. But we got to believe in all of it, you know, and not just throw one yeah. out and focus on one, you know, focus in on that. You know what I mean? Um, we got to have yeah. a balanced spiritual life in order for us to be effective for other people. Yeah. And I think that's the trick is to find the balance for you mm -hmm. and for me and for whoever else, you know, um, because I, I think that, you know, um, there's a lot of people that have, you know, some, um, some real extreme ideas on, and I don't think that that's good because it's it's indoctrinating them to say that this this and this doctrine is correct, but that doctrine isn't. Yeah. See what I'm saying? And so we got to yeah. have all of it. Yeah, absolutely. If that makes sense. Yeah. It does. So, you know, I mean, I think that's what he was trying to allude to. You know, yeah. is, and, is that so. Yeah, and really the Bible has to be the foundation. That's where we have to start. Well, that's the only way we can evangelize because, mm -hmm. you know, we have to evangelize out of the Bible and teach out yeah. of the Bible. Well, 
Yeah, do it biblically. Because like Ray Comfort, right. he'll bring up that if you've looked on another with lust and you've already committed adultery, that's what Jesus said. Or if you've hated your brother or sister, you've already committed murder in your heart. So then you've broken another commandment there. And, you know, although at the same time, we have to have enough balance not to just start spitting out scripture at them all, you know. Right. Because somebody that's not saved and not familiar with scripture, that that's going to turn them off if all the, if you're just spouting scripture and nothing I, but scripture. The way I evangelize is my life, you know, mm-hmm. is... Yeah. That, you know, making wise and healthy decisions, you know, yeah. for myself, you know, and then other people get to watch it, you know, yeah. and maybe, maybe I'm the closest thing that they'll see to a Bible. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Through my, yeah. through my life experiences and through how I, through how they have seen me act on certain things. Yeah. You know, yeah, and so I try to powerful. I try to lead by example, not not mm-hmm. just, you know, throwing the word at them and yeah. And, you know, leaving it and calling it a day. Yeah. Yeah, cuz that's what we're supposed to do is walk it out every day. We're supposed to live it. Not just for an hour or so on Sunday, but every day. Be- because, you know, I mean, the thing is is for me you know, we can, we can do all this other stuff, but, you know, I mean, how spiritual is it really if yeah. we're not walking it out? Yeah. You know, um, people go to church all the time. They drink cuss like sailor, sailors and all that stuff, mm-hmm. you know, on a weekly basis. And then they come to church and they're not getting blessed because of that. Yeah. You know, you have to live the gospel. And I think that that's the best way to evangelize. Mm -hmm. That's been my experience. Yeah, it has to be a way of life. You can't just do it once a week. It has to be every day, all the time. Right. Do you have anything else? Oh, not a whole lot. Were you wanting to talk a little bit about the fivefold ministry tonight? Or? Um, let's do that some other time. Okay. But um, I've got to go here soon, so. Okay. Um, we'll be in touch. Okay. Look forward to it. All right. Let's see, the picture just froze there, huh? <laughs> there we go. I guess that's it for tonight. Just a brief conversation about evangelism. But, you know, that's something everybody is supposed to do. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that evangelizing is something you're supposed to do as part of the Great Commission. So... It's worthwhile to study it so you can go and be a witness for Jesus and help people find salvation so they don't have to end up in hell. But I guess I'm, I guess we're done for tonight, and I sure appreciate everybody who came by and watched the broadcast. Hope I see you on the next one. God bless you. <laughs>